Hi everybody, this is John Lortz from DiscoverSkills.com and today I'd like to talk a little bit about cloud computing and in particular I want to take you up to the cloud and show you an online photo editor that I've found to be very powerful. In fact, it's, uh, it's so powerful that it rivals the power of Adobe Photoshop Elements. Now I'm not suggesting that you replace Photoshop Elements with this cloud-based computing, but I think what it does show you is how things are beginning to move up more and more onto the internet and if not Nothing else, this photo editor that we're going to go to can be used if you are away from your regular computer or just need to do some quick fixing and, and don't have access to Photoshop Elements. So here we go. We're going to pull up this window that I've already got open. And the website we're going to go to is called Pixlr.com. And the address is PIXLR.com. And that's what you need to type into your browser address bar to visit this site. Now, once we get here, the, what we're going to do is we're going to come right up to the menu system and we want to go into the photo editor. It's called the Pixlr Editor. So I go click and this will take me into the editor. Now today we're just going to do some very, very basic things to kind of show you how this editor uh, can maybe be useful to you. You know, writing a full-blown tutorial on how to use this editor would take me many videos. I just want to give you a push in the right direction. That's it today. So we're going to, we're going to keep it really simple. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is when, when the editor first comes up is we need to open up our image from our computer. Okay, so we're going to go click. We're going to get the standard open window, and this is where you'd need to navigate to the folder that contains your picture. And in this case, I've already done that on my local computer here. And I'm going to slide down to the picture I want. So you find your picture, you go click to select it, and then click open, and it opens up in this cloud based editor. Okay. Now, one thing I'm going to mention here um, in a lot of the classes that we teach, we normally teach you to first save your picture as a new file before you start messing with it so that you don't mess up the original. I'm not going to do that today because with a cloud-based editor like this Pixlr program, um, we don't have the same risk of over overriding our picture accidentally. And so we are not going to do a save right off the bat. We're just going to open the picture and start working on it. Okay. Now, again, today I'm not going to get into uh, a lot of heavy duty editing, we're just going to do some basic things. For example, one of the very first things we normally do when we open up a picture is we rotate it if we need to. Now this picture doesn't need to be rotated, but just let me show you how easy it is to do that in this online editor. And what we're going to do is come up to the menu system right up here at the top, and I'm going to click on image. Image contains a lot of the physical things you can do with the picture, including rotations. Okay, so let's say this picture was on its side because we took it on our camera sideways. All we'd have to do is come down here to rotate canvas, either click clockwise or counterclockwise, and this I'll just click clockwise here, and there we go. The picture is rotated. Okay, pretty easy to do here. Now, we didn't really need to do that to this picture, so second thing I want to show you is under the edit menu, you have the good old undo button. So I'm going to click on undo and we'll undo that. So you can see how easy it was to do our rotations of this picture. Now next thing we often do in our, our basic workflow of, of image editing is we crop away parts of the picture we don't want. And to do that we're going to come over here to this toolbar. Okay, here's our toolbar right here. Tools are simply uh, features that are part of this image editor that you access by clicking on the tool icon and then your mouse becomes that tool. And in this case, we're going to come over here to this funny looking little tool here that's called the crop tool. I'm going to go ahead and go click on it. I come down to my image and let's say that I only want the big balloon. Well, I'm going to drag out a box and I go click, drag, and drop and that will drag out a crop box. That's what this is right here. I can adjust the size of the crop box by dragging these handles. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. I'll give a little bit more space down below there. Okay, then to finish the crop, I simply put my mouse on top of the crop area and I go double click. And there we go. The picture has been cropped. Okay, so that's another piece of our workflow that we often teach. Next thing I want to do then is I want to actually make this picture look better. I want to enhance it or make it look better. And one of the features that we always teach in Photoshop Elements is called Levels. Levels allows us to, to adjust the exposure of the picture in, in a more sophisticated, 
better way than, than, than just plain old brightness and contrast does. So I'm going to do that today by going to the adjustment menu. Notice there is actually a levels option here that I'm going to click on. And that opens up this little window right here. Now, this graph is called a histogram, and I'm not going to get into the details of, of what all this, this, these lines and bumps and colors and all that kind of stuff mean today. Today, again, I just want to keep things simple and quick. What I will do, though, is show you how to use this. This graph represents or shows you um, the luminance of your picture, how bright and how dark parts of it are. The problem is, is that there's a big gap from where our graph ends and the endpoints. That's why this looks so muddy here. Okay, so to fix this, all I have to do is take this little slider here, and this is actually something I can drag, and I'm going to slide it up to the beginning of the graph. I'm going to take the white slider and drag it to the end of the graph. You can see here how much better it's already gotten. Then I can go to the middle slider and drag it back and forth, and it actually shows me changing the contrast of the picture. Okay, so I can drag this and kind of eyeball it here. All right, so do you see how to use that? It's just very simple. Drag this into the end, this into the end, drag this back and forth until it looks good, and you fix the exposure of your picture. In other videos and in other classes and books, we teach all about what this really is doing here, but today we're just going to keep it simple, as I said. So I go ahead and click OK, and there we go. Now the last thing I'm going to do here to fix this picture up a little bit is, and in, in, in this again is part of our basic workflow, is we're going to sharpen the picture. And to do that, just so you can see it a little bit better, I'm going to come over to the toolbar and grab my magnifying glass tool, put it on my picture, and I'm going to click on the gondola and zoom in a little bit. Okay, and you can see here that I've zoomed in. Now you don't have to do this to sharpen, but again, I kind of want to show you that there is actually some sharpening that's going to happen here. Okay, now if I go to the filter pull down menu, these are all kinds of different filters and special effects we can apply to this picture. What we're going to do here is simply come down to sharpen. And while I click this, I want you to watch this area right here and see if you can see a difference. Okay, so I will say one, two, ready, go, click. Did you see that little bit there? Do you see it get a little bit, little bit sharper here? Let me go to Edit and do Undo. All right, now watch the picture down by the gondola again. I'm going to click Undo, click. You see it get a little bit fuzzier down there? And let me go back up to it again and click Redo, and you'll see the sharpening happen again. Click. See, I got a little bit sharper there? Okay. Now, if you do too much sharpening, it will introduce what's called noise, and you can see a little bit of that starting right there. But again, when you're doing basic editing on your, on your pictures, a little bit of sharpening will make it look better, especially if you print it out. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back over here with my magnifying glass tool, and to zoom out a little bit, I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to choose Show All and that'll zoom it all the way back out again. So there we go, we've got our finished picture. Now, last step, we need to go to the File menu and we need to save our work. So we click on Save right here. This is where, in the Save window, is where you can choose where on your computer you want to save it to, okay? And you can also choose the format of the picture, whether you want to keep it as a JPEG or turn it into a TIFF or some other format and then of course give it a name. Now in our image editing classes again we teach that when you edit pictures to keep the full quality of your picture you should save it as a TIFF. TIFF means no quality is lost when you save the picture. Or if you're just doing some quick editing and you want to email this off now and you're not too worried about saving it as a TIFF and keeping the quality you could just choose JPEG here. Okay, We're going to choose TIFF though. We're going to choose TIFF. All right, so I'm saving it as TIFF format. I'm going to come up here, and the name of my picture originally was Color Curves, and I'm simply going to add on to the end of it. Okay, so we got her set on Fixed here. That's the name Color Curves Fixed. And then I'm going to click OK. Now, it's going to open up an additional window and say, where do you want to save it to? Okay, I am going to, so that we can easily see this and go back into it here, I'm going to go ahead and save it to my desktop today. Normally, you'd probably save it right back into the folder that you got it from. But I'm going to save it to my desktop. 
click Save. Image has been saved. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and minimize this here. Come back out to my computer, and there is my file. And I'm going to I'm going to open it up in Windows. And this again, this is local a local file saved to my computer. I'm going to right click and open it. Just preview, right click and click preview, and it'll open up into a window. And there it is. It's sitting on my computer. There's the file I just got done with. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's go back into our image editor again so you can see here that this is a cloud-based editor this isn't really on my computer in fact one of the things I wanted to caution you about that as you're working in here if you do click on the back button in your browser okay you run the risk of losing your picture do you see what happened there I clicked on back I go forward again now and look at that picture I had opened it's not there anymore so, you know, one of the things you have to be careful with is that when you open up a picture and you start working on it. Let me go back over here to my pictures and, and open that back up again here. Or open up a picture here. There's Sam Pix. And I'll come back down to my Color Curves picture again and we'll open it back up again. Okay, so once you've opened up this picture and you started to work on it, the thing you don't want to do is mess with your browser buttons up here. You know, you've got this open up in the cloud. As you're working on it, just make sure that you stay here on the tools in the editor. Don't go up to your browser because the minute you come up here again and you've got, let's say I've got this picture open and I'm working on it, and I click the back button on my browser. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I go forward again and the picture is gone. Okay. But I guess the point is, this is an online photo editor that you can use. And the cool thing is, is that if you don't have Photoshop at home, or again, if you, if you do have Photoshop, but you're somebody else's computer, and you just want to do some quick fixes, this might be the answer for you. Now, in the future, I'll probably have some more videos to get into more detail about how to use Pixlr. But today, I just wanted to give you a push in the direction of giving it a try yourself. Okay, so, so head out to Pixlr.com, that's P-I-X-L-R.com, and give this a try. Now, as always, if you've got any questions, you have any comments, or if you'd like to see some of our other videos, I would love to have you visit our website. The address is www.discoverskills.com. And of course, I'd love to hear from you if you've got any questions or comments that you'd like to make directly to me. My email address is w or not www. <laughs> my email address is jlortz at discoverskills. Com. Hope you enjoyed this video today. Hope you give Pixlr a try, and I will see you in the next video.